Good morning everyone and welcome to my first video on creating a dress on camera. This is my um, kind of the dress that I'm known for in my Etsy shop. This pattern that I use is actually from sensibility.com. It is so perfect in sizing when you order from her website. Now it is printed through Simplicity. I don't think they print it anymore. Maybe they do, I'm not sure. But through Simplicity, you definitely have to fidget with sizing. I'm gonna be starting with her pattern and just kinda of changing it up a bit. So um, this is the lining, here's the sari, and then I plan on putting cording in there. I do want structure in the neckline. I try and make it so that I gather it in the middle more here. I'm gonna reshape the neckline. I'm gonna bring it a little bit lower. So yeah, I'll show you how I do that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna retrace this onto some tissue paper so that I can start from scratch again. And uh, I might get some pins. Let's put a couple in, you don't need to pin it to death. Just going to retrace the outside really quick. Now it's retraced, take the pins out. Just cutting this out. I have my new piece cut out. Now we can just start from scratch. Instead of using this one that I use for all my dresses in the shop, I'm gonna go ahead and just use this one to chop up the neckline and reshape it the way I want. And that way I don't have to worry about trying to refine the shape that I had before. It's always good to have record of the different shapes that you have so you can go revert back to them. So now this is my mannequin. We're gonna do a 34 inch bust. Now that I have the right size, I'm gonna put this on right here. I'll take a pen and how I usually do this is I'll draw where I wanna cut it out. And remember you have to account for a seam allowance. I'll probably widen the neck up here, just make it wider, cause the Regency era does have a lot more wider necklines and I'm look going for more of that look. Okay, so I just took it in a little bit down here and I'm kind of bringing it into a scoop in the front so that it's not just straight across, it kind of goes like this. Now you can see I changed the, the piece up and I cut it out, and now that it's there, it's a lot lower, so it has more of that Regency ball gown look, not that it didn't before, but this is just a different style. So I'm gonna cut out the skirt and the bigger pieces first. If you start cutting out all the small pieces and there's all these little holes and cuts here and there, now when you get to your bigger pieces, you can't really cut out over the big holes and stuff. Whereas the smaller pieces, you can kind of move it over here. I love to listen to music while I'm working, especially on cloudy days, because cloudy days make me really slow. I'm not super motivated, so I have to get some pick-me-up music to get me going. <laughs> So here's the deal. We have the skirt cut out, and now we're ready to cut out the bodice. So what I'm gonna do is, this is the overlay fabric. The sari is the overlay fabric of the front piece itself. So just the front piece. I'm gonna cut two linings and one of this sari fabric that's the overlay. And the reason why I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna have, obviously have the lining, and then I'm, this is gonna be the outside fabric. But I'm gonna need something, a line, or a, um, fabric to give stability to the back of this fabric. So that is what the third, the second piece of this is. So there's three pieces all together. And I'll show you how that works. Here, I'm gonna measure, eh, I'm gonna do a decent amount because I kind of want a lot of gathers in here. So I'm gonna do about five inches on the fold here. I'm only doing this to the sari, the sari piece. And then I'm gonna cut it out right here. Okay, so now this piece is cut out. So, and then the front of the linings, I'm gonna, so this is already on the fold right here. I already folded it. So I'm gonna refold it again here. I'm just gonna cut this one normal on the fold. So by the time I cut both of these out, there's gonna be two lining pieces there. And now I'm gonna grab this piece right here. So we have this long, 
it's really wide in the front. I'm just gonna put running stitches all the way down here, just kind of approximately. Yeah, I'm, but I wanna make sure the running stitches start and stop at the same side. So I think I'm gonna say, eh, I kind of want my stitches to be even with the corner of this, maybe a little bit out. So I'm gonna put a pin right here. Now I'm gonna apply my running stitches. Do it on a large stitch, so like a number four probably. I'm gonna do two stitches side by side because that makes the stitches a little bit more, um, or the gatherings more e like even. When you do one, it's just kind of bulky and lumpy and yeah. All right, so this is what it looks like when the running stitches are finished. I'm gonna wanna take one of these regular cotton pieces and I'm just gonna lay this on top. I'm basically gonna gather it to fit the under piece here. Okay, so we're at the iron. What I like to do is, well, first of all, let me say this. Pressing is everything. Sewing is not just sewing. You don't just sew seams and then open them up. Pressing technique, everything is so, so, so important to making everything look crisp and clean and have that special look that people don't even know how to verbalize what they're seeing, but they might look at it and go, that's different. So I'm just going to stretch these gathers out here. I have my irons all heated up. And I do like to put a little bit of water in my iron to kind of steam it down and make it look super flat. Here, pressing down the gathers. Otherwise, you're gonna have lumps. Now you can see it's all flat. It's not so lumpy. You know how I mentioned that I'm gonna make a lining piece of the fabric, one with the sari? Well, to give it stability and to give it some body, so I have these, these are um, back seams or the back pieces. I'm just gonna put them together like this. And I'm just gonna pin it together like that. And I'm just gonna make it one piece. All right, I'm gonna go and stitch them together. Here we go, it's on the mannequin. You can kind of see the finished look here. Well, it's not finished yet, actually. You'll see there's some space under here, right? That's because the other pattern had gathers here, and so it would kind of bring it in, so it would shape the bust. But instead of putting gathers there, I'm actually gonna put a dart there to kind of give it some shape. So now I'm gonna add the, the piping or the cording And here I've added the cording, and it's ready for the sleeves. As you can see, I've made the sleeves, and here I've added the trim. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch those together, the trim onto the sleeves, and then the sleeves are ready to go on the dress. Just pinning the armholes in place so that they don't shift as I pin the sleeves to the bodice. have the bodice is finished. Now all we have to do is just attach the sleeves. I'll probably, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to gather it there. I'm not sure. I still am undecided about that, but in the back I definitely want more gathers so it's fuller in the back for sure.